Hi, this is Ruth Brown. I'm at Network X on the Nokia stand with Herb Kleinick. Welcome. Thank you. Today we're talking about fibre. So access networks are no longer the bottlenecks they once were and fibre is really driving um, the broadband network forward. Perhaps you could give me your thoughts about um, what excites you with fibre. Yeah, I'm really excited about fibre and fibre market is booming. And it's logical, right? I mean, you deploy fiber and it's by far the best technology out there. If you look at speeds, if you look at the greenness of, of the technology. And once you deploy fiber, it actually lasts forever. So, so you can invest once and you can keep on leveraging it. Traditionally, our CSPs, they have been deploying fiber with as a use case really to address the residential market. And as a consequence, they are laying out fiber in all the streets, in all the cities to each and every corner. And then suddenly, if you think about this, it's very obviously obvious that you can connect additional services to this. You can think about mobile applications, you can think about enterprises, you can think about smart cities, uh, traffic cameras, all those things can suddenly be connected on the same network. So it's an easy way of upselling your fiber infrastructure mm -hmm. and to get some more revenue out of this. And then on top of that, there are some new technologies which are coming up. And one of the technologies I want to talk about is a bit slicing. So if you think about slicing, you can start creating slices on top of your network to create additional revenue. Whether it's for industry for the door, whether it's a gaming service, whether it's a workflow or work from home package. So all those things can generate additional revenue. So the fact that you can generate additional revenue is quite appealing for a lot of investors. So we have our big operators and they continue to deploy fiber, but you also have regional operators, you have pension funds, you have uh, venture capitalists, they are all investing into fiber. At the same time, governments are investing because they want to be sure there's no digital divide. So it's very clear that fiber is really a booming market. XTS PON is becoming quite mainstream now. I wonder if you could share your thoughts about how you think operators can monetize um, XTS PON. So it's very clear that gigabit and multi-gigabit networks is basically something that everybody starts deploying. So if you look at some of the reports over the last year, the amount of gigabit subscriptions have doubled. So we are now at around 30% of the global subscription, which is gigabit. So this is enormous. And why this is? Because it really improves the user experience through all of the, of the customers who are using a gigabit service. So think about it. On one hand, you have the humans. And we become more and more impatient as we progress. On the other hand, we have enormous amount of data. And that combination of the two is really driving the need for speed. So why is there a lot of data out there? Well, it's, it's logical, right? Everything is basically turning into video. When you talk about video, it's about entertainment. It's about education. It's about work. It's about home security. All those things are basically video. Even if you serve on the internet, 10 years ago, an average page over the internet was around 2 megabytes. Today, it's 20 or even 30 megabytes. And at the same time, a human will click away from a web page if it's not there within five seconds. So that combination is also driving additional speed. When I'm using cloud services, I'm actually expecting that cloud services will be treated in the same way as it's coming from my hard disk. So again, driving the need for speed. And as an industry, with an XGS technology, with a 25 gig pond technology, we are really accommodating all those needs for speeds. And we even have more room to address additional services. So yeah, very clearly, this is what is driving the need for XGS. Great. Um, if we think about um, energy efficiency, so that's top of most operators' agendas right now. Can you share your thoughts with how you think fiber networks can become more energy efficient and what are you doing in that area? So let me just talk first about the industry itself. If you deploy a fiber technology, you are six to 10 times more efficient than any other fixed access technology. On top of that, you are basically bringing additional services, which also reduce the footprint from the global planet. It's about optimizing processes so you can optimize and consume or use less CO2. It's about the fact that you're no longer traveling, but you do some uh, Teams events in order to meet the customer or at least you are reducing it. So from a global perspective, the impact that we have just from a service provisioning is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And obviously we should be very proud of it from, from an industry perspective. But if you zoom in into the industry, it's also important to be as green as possible from cradle to grave. It's about the manufacturing, it's about the packaging, it's about the transport, it's about the 
use of CO2 during the lifetime of a product and at the end of the lifetime of a product. So if you look concretely, what we have done from a Nokia perspective, if you look at manufacturing, mm -hmm. by 2030, all of our manufacturing will be using renewable energy. And by 2025, we will have the first factory which has converted into green renewables. At the same time, we are selecting the material based on the CO2 footprint. If you look at packaging, we are using fully recyclable carbon packaging. So that's one element. But the second element is we are optimizing the packaging to make it as dense as possible. If you make it dense, you can put more equipment into the same container. So hence, you reduce the transport overhead. And if you look at within the transport overhead, you have different ways of shipping. You can go via boat or you go, go via plane. We have to reduce the amount of the percentage that we use via play to less than 20% mm -hmm. in 2023. From a power efficiency perspective, we have introduced our Quillian chipset a couple of years ago. This is still beating the EU code of conduct with 50%. So it's a very power efficient component, which is, which is the core of our system. And then if you look at the end of life, we are using 80% recyclable material. So even at the end of life, we can recycle an awful lot. So it is very clear that if you think about the well-being of the planet, if you think about connecting and providing the right level of experience towards the end user, fiber is a key element. It has an attractive business case, it is very power efficient, and it allows us to connect customers and people in a more eco-friendly way. Thank you, Herd. It's been lovely speaking with you today. Thank you. Okay.